I'm Charlotte. Welcome back to Diary of an It Girl. Welcome to the most celebrated flower show in the world. It can only be the one and only RHS Chelsea Flower Show 2017. the eyes of the world have turned their attention to London's SW3 for the RHS Chelsea Flower Show, which has 165,000 visitors, more than 60,000 plants, a 12,000 square foot pavilion packed with over 100 plant exhibitors. The list goes on and on. So it really isn't surprising that the whole of SW3 joins in on the action. With Chelsea in Bloom having a safari theme this year, walking around the streets, it's not hard to tell that it is that time of year again. Let's take a closer look at what Chelsea in Bloom is all about. I am at Chelsea and Bloom in the middle of Sloan Square and I am with the lovely Danny. Danny, can you tell me what is going on here today? So obviously we've got the Chelsea Flower Show going on this week and the whole area gets involved. Um, it extends to the whole of Chelsea and Chelsea and Bloom is basically a big uh, competition between all the local shops they're all competing against each other for the people's champion award for the best window display with the safari theme she's made a hippo here we've got an elephant at the back we've got a crocodile there's some lions on the king's road some zebras on the sloan street Amazing. The Chelsea Flower Show hosts Main Avenue Gardens, Artisan Gardens, Fresh Gardens and New Feel Good Gardens. There are exhibitors to designers to landscapes. Everyone working around the clock to ensure perfection. And with the changes this year where the gardens were judged a day early, the pressure was on to stick to their schedules. Gardens at Chelsea push boundaries. They open up a world of new possibilities. They get your senses racing, enrich you, and elevate your own experience of gardening, no matter how big or small. The fact of the matter is, if it appears at Chelsea, everyone wants it. So where better to start than taking a look at the magnificent show gardens on Main Avenue. joined with the wonderful Tracy Foster at her fantastic garden at the Chelsea Flower Show 2017. Tracy, tell me, how did you get the inspiration to do this garden? 
Um, regardless of welcome to Yorkshire Garden, so it had to represent part of Yorkshire and we want to attract people to visit Yorkshire and enjoy all the nice things that it's got to offer. Yeah. Um, so my idea was to go for something coastal and share with everybody the lovely coastline that we've got. So that was where it started. Okay. And building on that, I, I wanted to do something really natural to use community plants that would actually exist together on the seashore. And that's kind of been the thinking behind it. Did you have something that was just your biggest challenge to overcome when you were designing the garden? Um, certainly getting the height okay. um, on what is a really flat site normally. I don't know if you've been here when the show isn't on, but it's literally just flat grass. Yes. Um, so getting a structure in place that would support the weight of all that soil mm. and enable us to make that natural landscape. And then after that, just weaving together all the plants to make something <laughs> yes. that looks like it isn't artificial. Like yeah. That's been quite, quite I fun. mean, it literally looks like you've just chopped out a piece of land from Yorkshire and just yeah. plonked yeah. it yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. And what I love, what I noticed when I came through was the bobbing of the water and how it always creates like waves. Welcome to Yorkshire Garden was one of my favourites. Having never been to Chelsea before, walking in and seeing this as my first show garden took my breath away. Whilst it is slightly controversial with some saying that this is a landscape and not a garden, Chelsea is renowned for pushing boundaries on what a garden is. Tracy was awarded a silver medal. Television does not do the Linklater's Garden for Maggie's justice. This was designed by Darren Hawkes and is the first ever hidden garden to be attempted on Main Avenue. You view the garden by walking along an elevated walkway. The garden is not completely visible from ground level. The walkway gives a whole new perspective on space. The point of this is to be more engaging with the public rather than have them standing behind a rope. Maggie's centres are built in the grounds of NHS hospitals and provide free support for people living with cancer and their families. The hidden garden represents that safe and protected feeling one feels when at Maggie's centres and creates an almost therapeutic sanctuary. Elements of the garden are going to Bart Hospital where a new Maggie centre is being built. Rightfully so, this garden was awarded a gold medal. I cannot not mention the garden which conjured up Covent Garden's iconic location and history in a space of 10 metres squared. The 500 Years of Covent Garden show garden was designed by Lee Bestall, who even included identical miniature arches from Covent Garden in the small space, as well as planting numerous apple trees, which gave a fantastic nod to history. 500 years ago, Covent Garden was an apple orchard. Let's take a closer look and meet Lee's designing partner. Why did you decide to design such a challenging garden for your first time on the Main Avenue? So it is our first time on Main Avenue. We've also designed two gardens before this, smaller ones, so we've kind of worked up to, to kind of build the show garden yeah. size. Um, so we did the Welcome to Yorkshire Garden in 2015, which is a little artisan garden, uh, and then we did a fresh garden uh, for Westminster Council last year. So we thought the next logical step is to have a go on Main Avenue and we were asked to do it, so we thought, yeah, why not take on the challenge? A little old birdie told me that you actually went down to Cotton Garden and measured the gaps in between the paving stones, so That's they'd be right. exactly the same. That's right, yeah, also all the paving and the, and the cobbles are sourced sort of exactly the same as the ones at Covent Garden and, and Lee, the co-designer, he was down his hands and knees with the teacher <laughs> just to ensure that there are the right spacing. Exactly It's that same. kind of attention to detail that you yeah. need in a, in a kind of show garden. Yeah, absolutely. Like taking care of those little things is really important. Yeah. Well, congratulations. I think the garden is absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much. Welcome to Chelsea's back room, the Great Pavilion. Walking around, you feel as though you are immersed in a fantasy garden. It really is sublime.
into the Great Pavilion was a huge achievement. It is home to over 100 specialist plant exhibitors, so my expectations were high. But walking in for the first time took my breath away. Everywhere you looked, there was another exhibit which made you gasp. The atmosphere was actually rather romantic. Waves of perfume from the flowers wafted through the air, bringing different scents with every turn you took. What these exhibitors create is far beyond my imagination. How they do it? I do not know, but it was an absolute pleasure to be there. Thanks guys, that's all from me. I hope I gave you an insight into how fantastic the RHS Chelsea Flower Show 2017 was. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment letting me know if you went to Chelsea this year, what did you love? And if you've never been, then let me know if this video has inspired you to go. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next Wednesday. Bye.